Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. In this episode of the Explain series, I'll be explaining the Epsom Barr virus and it's uh, in, in relation to HIV uh, infection. Uh, obviously, Epsom Barr virus is a very common uh, infection, uh, which near enough all human beings uh, will get. How common is it? Well, uh, in this graph you see in front of you at the moment, uh, this is only for um, for uh, the incidence of uh, Epsom Barr virus in uh, babies, effectively at 12 to, and 24 months of age. Um, so that, and even then, it's around about 40% incidence. Uh, there was a study done in the United States which showed 90 to 95% uh, of adults uh, have Epsom Barr virus. So. Uh, it's effectively like most other herpes virus, like the uh, human simplex virus that causes um, herpes or cold sores, or chickenpox, which is caused by uh, the varicella zoster virus, VZV. Um, the part of the human uh, herpes virus family, uh, everyone um, eventually uh, gets them and they hide uh, within the cells. And once you've got the infection, you can't uh, get rid of it. It's a very, very common uh, infection. Uh, with regards to uh, the infection, once it's uh, established, um, uh, it can uh, eventually come out and it's spread uh, through the uh, secretions, most notably the, saliv so the sal salivary uh, secretions in the salivary gl glands. Um, and that's, that's why one of the reasons why it's called um, a kissing disease. Uh, the virus can also be shed in uh, semen and vaginal uh, secretions. Um, uh, so if you haven't caught um, Epsom Barr virus, uh, when you're a child, you will most probably have caught it uh, by the time you, you become uh, sexually active. Um, for a lot of people, that's in either their late teens or, uh, or in their 20s at some time as well. Um, and this is where, which leads to the peak incidence of infectious mononucleosis in the teens or the early 20s. Uh, now, infectious mononucleosis is just the technical name for effectively glandular fever. We'll come on to that later. So um, when you have no immune system and HIV has, uh, you're not in treatment, HIV has wiped it out, or you've become very, very old and your immune system is uh, a lot more tired. Now in certain specific clinical circumstances, can Epsom Barr virus be considered an actual tumor marker? But I do not want you running away with the idea that if you've got Epsom Barr virus, and it's detected in a blood test that, you're, that, that somehow is indicative of a cancer. It's not. Uh, it's, it's only if you've got so very, very large growths, for example, in the neck or in other places in the body, you're severely immunosuppressed. Uh, for example, you have a HIV diagnosis or you're a transplant patient uh, or you're uh, very old um, and quite frail, then uh, this is where the importance comes in. If you're a healthy um, uh, a teenager or um, an active adult, uh, then uh, don't run away with the wrong idea. Uh, Epsom Barr virus is just like herpes, just like chickenpox. It's not, uh, for the vast majority of people, it's not a great, um, uh, a big deal. Uh, and importantly, it has to be uh, in relation to um, usually another disease, other clinical symptoms, and in, in the context of HIV, usually with a low CD4 count as well. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, so if you are HIV positive, um, uh, chances are you've got your Epsom Barr uh, virus infection uh, way before you got HIV infection. Uh, and the important thing is that if you're uh, EBV uh, positive um, and you've got HIV, you've got a, a greater than 60 times risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And that is why um, when you go, well, that's why it's useful if you've got HIV, you should go to your routine hospital appointments every six months uh, to see your HIV doctor and they should give you a quick uh, once over. Just check your glands, uh, uh, check your breathing, check a few other bits and pieces just to make sure everything is generally okay. Now, some bar virus is highly associated with primary CNS uh, lymphoma, um, which is uh, an subject of another video. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about that much uh, now. Um, but what is uh, noted is, uh, is usually if someone's been diagnosed with uh, primary CNS uh, lymphoma, they usually need some kind of brain biopsy. But the good thing about a brain biopsy, uh, sorry, uh, sometimes you don't have to do a brain biopsy because if you do, uh, CSF-PCR, let's take a sample through a lumbar puncture of your lower spine, 
uh, of your cerebral spinal fluid, that's what CSF stands for, um, and you and the uh, test picks up um, Epsom Barr virus PCR, especially if it's a high load in the thousands, then you probably don't need a brain biopsy. Okay, so it's very uh, uh, specific for that. Uh, if, obviously, if there's any uh, other clinical indication, it could be something else, then uh, a brain biopsy would need to be done. So, um, the, the role of uh, Epsom Barr virus PCR uh, in the blood is generally uncertain. I think it's useful if you're seeing a patient with um, newly diagnosed HIV just to find out what their um, Epsom Barr viral uh, load is. Um, but usually it's, it, it's not a great uh, factor just on its own regarding uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. You need to have other uh, clinical um, uh, signs and symptoms going on as well. Um, but uh, otherwise, uh, if you want to have a, a good Epsom Barr viral um, uh, PCR uh, test done. Uh, probably speak to your microbiologist if your hospital doctor. Speak to your microbiologist at your local hospital, um, and uh, they will be able to give you how good uh, the assay uh, they're using is in terms of quantifying uh, the extensive nature uh, of the Epsom Barr virus. But as a general rule, if um, if you if you don't know the uh, microbiologist at your hospital, you can just do uh, a simple EBV viral load. Um, DNA, um, and then they will be able to tell you uh, whether it's particularly high or low. Most tests nowadays are reasonably uh, good, to be perfectly honest with you. In terms of infectious mononucleosis, now you don't do Epsom Barr virus um, DNA to diagnose infectious mononucleosis. It's usually a, a clinical thing. And if you're concerned about, well, is this um, glandular fever, is this HIV, then you do a HIV test uh, and not a, a monospot or a um, uh, EPV DNA test. Um, e either way, uh, the monospot test is actually very good and it diagnoses 90% of people with infectious mononucleosis. Uh, there's a small 10% um, of individuals which won't get a positive diagnosis and they can be used by another test. Now, if they're HIV positive, you'll probably do an Epsom Barr viral, uh, viral EPV viral load um, uh, DNA test anyway to find out if you can actually detect the virus uh, itself. Okay, so um, in terms of uh, the sites of infection, well, you've got lots of HIV related lymphomas, for example, B cell lymphoma, uh, T cell, natural killer uh, cell lymphoma, um, sporadic birth control lymphoma, and primary fusion uh, lymphoma. And it's important to realize that a lot of these lymphomas, uh, they don't all contain Epsom Barr virus. The important thing to know and why they do an Epsom Barr viral, uh, virus viral load is to find out if the Epsom Barr virus is actually driving uh, the lymphoma um, uh, forward or not. So uh, in primary fusion lymphoma, uh, 70 to 80 percent um, will have Epsom Barr virus in it. Uh, but interestingly enough, 100 percent will contain HHV8, which is another form of herpes uh, virus. But it's the EBV which is pushing or driving primary fusion lymphoma forward. Um, it can also be, Epsom Barr virus can be a driving force of um, HLH, that stands for hemophagocytic lymphohistocytosis, which is a bit of a mouthful, hence why it's only called HLH. And uh, there's a video on that already um, a few episodes back. Um, now, uh, uh, HLH can come uh, of its own accord and is not necessarily caused by Epsom Barr virus, but if you've got Epsom Barr virus at the same time, um, and this is the driving force of HLH and you have HIV, then um, this is not good. And then therefore the EBV will definitely need to be uh, treated. Um, and depending on how immune suppressed an individual is, they would need to be uh, treated for Epsom Barr virus infection. But you don't treat it for glandular fever. So this on this graph, it just tells you that there's different types of effusion lymphomas. Um, Epsom Barr virus is, uh, is positive in, uh, in many of them, but not in uh, all of them. And it's just um, something of uh, note, really. <clears throat> now, uh, you can also have uh, nasolangeal carcinoma, uh, leomyosarcoma, which is mainly in children or young adults. Um, the important one here, I think, is all hairy uh, leukoplakia, which is, um, it looks like all thrush, um, but the thing is, you can't scrape off uh, the oral thrush uh, with uh, OHL, which is all hairy leukoplakia. 
Um, and so uh, this is a form of effective um, uh, cancer, if you like, uh, uh, and it's easily treatable, um, but it can be, uh, it needs to be, you need to see a doctor straight away, one, because you need a HIV test, uh, two, um, sometimes it is rough, um, so people don't diagnose it uh, correctly, and also it could be um, squamous cell uh, carcinoma as well, uh, which needs a different type of treatment to all hairy lymphopathia. Um, uh, in terms of uh, infectious mononucleosis, uh, that tends to be, um, you tend to have a fever with that, you tend to have raised, uh, raised lymph nodes, so lymph and endopathy, and also uh, pharyngitis. Um, and if it's an unclear presentation, whether it's infectious mononucleosis or um, HIV, then you do a HIV test. And it's, uh, there's no harm in making sure that a HIV test is done. These are pictures of what all hairy leukoplakia uh, look like, um, and uh, it, it affects usually the outer cells of the uh, tongue, and usually you are immunosuppressed or immunosenescent. That basically means you're getting older and your immune system is going down. Um, the important thing is, is uh, if you're getting this and you're relatively young, but you've had you're either on steroids or you're for a very long time or you're post-transplantation or you have any of these uh, symptoms uh, in the previous picture uh, like uh, so then you need to um, basically get uh, tested uh, for HIV and you may need to even have a, a biopsy done as well uh, especially if your HIV test is uh, negative. So what is a treatment? Well the vast majority of the time, Epsom bar virus doesn't actually need to be treated at all. And so, if this is how you're presenting with an HIV test is positive, then the only way, the only real way to treat this is quite simply with HIV treatment. So, you need uh, antiretroviral therapy, and uh, that's purely referring to HIV antiretroviral therapy, uh, and that will uh, help improve the immune system and control um, uh, EBV uh, replication. If, if Epsom bar virus replication, uh, sorry, therapy is needed, then there's two treatments here, but a cyclovir is usually given because that's as, ten, as a general rule tends to be uh, better uh, tolerant. Um, so, in terms of all hair leukoplakia, many things have been done and many other studies have tried different things, but at the end of the day, in terms of HIV, it is antiretroviral food and acyclovir, but sometimes it can come back if you stop the acyclovir, um, especially if you stop it uh, too early. Uh, so sometimes acyclovir can be continued um, if it's particularly bad, or um, we, if it's not too bad, you'll probably just wait for the antiretroviral therapy uh, to um, suppress the HIV and for the body to increase the CD4 count. Of course, every clinical uh, every patient has to be treated uh, on their own merits uh, and depending on their clinical symptoms as well. <clears throat> if it's infectious mononucleosis, that's basically glandular fever, that's usually self-limiting anyway. Uh, within three weeks, sometimes it can be a little bit longer. So you need rest and supportive therapy. In terms of uh, the bottom one, uh, never use amoxicillin. Uh, so if you if if, it's, if a doctor if you've been diagnosed with glandular fever and you've got something which may need antibiotics. Uh, you don't use amoxicillin. So what would sometimes commonly happen is someone has a bit of a, uh, a nasty sore throat, uh, a bit of a fever, um, uh, and, and generally quite uh, washed out and tired. And then the family doctor will give amoxicillin um, for the throat, and then they come out with a big rash. Uh, and that uh, basically helps diagnose that they've actually got an Epsom bar uh, virus infection. Um, there are, I'm not going to go too much on this particular slide, but it's there just for you to uh, read up on. Um, at the end of the day, there's lots of antivirals, femcyclovir, valancyclovir, fosgarnet. Um, a lot of them have got quite nasty side effects, to be honest with you. So if you can tolerate acyclovir, you just take acyclovir. It's a safe drug. They even use it with pregnant women and generally uh, a good medication to take. So in conclusion, uh, everyone We'll probably get some bar virus, um, and so don't panic. You know, it's our bodies are, have coped with it. Uh, for, you know, we've evolved with it, 
uh, it's not a real uh, problem. However, um, uh, if you haven't ever had a HIV test and you are sexually active, you should get a HIV test. Remember to wear condoms as well. Um, and if you're diagnosed with HIV, take uh, your treatment every day. Your immune system will then rebuild itself and will take care of any Epstein-Barr virus infection most of the time. Any lumps or bumps, go and see a doctor. Okay. Uh, and if you're HIV negative or you're uh, of an older age group and you have an uh, Epstein-Barr virus related problem, uh, and, and, and for example, your tongue looks at some of the pictures uh, we've seen uh, in this um, slideshow, then uh, go and see your doctor as soon as possible. But if you, but if anyone on, who's watching this video wants to boost um, their immune system, uh, it's very important to have a good diet, high in fruit, vegetable, a little bit of protein as well, good quality protein ideally, uh, have a good sleep pattern and exercise. And that's anything that, that builds muscles effectively. Um, and that all this will help um, boost your uh, immune system as well. And uh, one thing that isn't on there is don't forget your vitamin D, um, whether it be sunshine, whether it be supplement, if you live in a region where it's quite dark in the winter, uh, and because of vitamin D will so boost your immune system. Okay. Uh, these are some of the websites I've used putting this together, and I'll just thank you all very much, and have a good sexual health, and please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you very much. Take care. Goodbye.